So we spoke quite a bit about headless e-commerce and what I would like to do in the roughly next 10 minutes, I would really like to show you how such a thing can, can look like quickly on the front and we just get an idea. And then I would like to show you how um, you can actually really work with uh, a multitude of different content pieces from different systems. So yeah, uh, we demonstrate you also how the authoring experience is and such uh, what you see is what you get experience. And therefore I would say, let's roll. Okay, um, so what we have here is just your classical um, storefront. So we have all kind of different categories as well as a lot of inspirational pieces, the uh, usual content that you would expect with um, carousels, teasers, banners. And here it's getting already interesting because the content on top was served from Magnolia. Um, that image here, for example, is coming from a completely different dam system. And we're going to see how to basically tackle that. And that part here, that's something that I like a lot. Um, that content here, that's actually paraphrased by AI. So you can nowadays even just take content, send it to various APIs, and then actually get um, meaningful um, new content back. That stuff here, for example, that is um, products coming from an e-commerce system, just handpicked with very good integrations we're going to see later on. Um, campaigns, teasers and banners that are actually managed um, in our dedicated campaign management solution. And um, finally, for example, here, uh, recommend as an AI-based recommendation to bring in um, recommendations based on the user journey in real time. So again, none of that content is really handpicked. It's all coming from the machine. Um, then again, your classical product detail page, but again, your parts of that page managed in Magnolia, um, then all the product data coming from the e-commerce system. And finally, um, then again, just AI based um, recommendations based on the user journey, based on the products and the shopping basket. Okay, um, next thing on the list, um, let's have a look on the um, inspirational pieces, how you can, for example, create lookbooks and all that engaging content to basically promote products, to educate about what you have. So for example, here that is coming from a content type. And again, you can just very easily come up with this direct call to action to aid you straight to the um, product detail pages and towards um, checkout. Same thing, blocks, as we know, that works very well for a lot of clients, how to manage blocks, and last but not least, also events, virtual or real events how to manage that in Magnolia. Okay, so now we have just seen basically how the front end looks like. Let's have a look on how the authoring experience really looks like. So what we have here is a complex multi-site, multi-language, multi-country setup. So as you can see, we have some kind of master content that can be automatically propagated or rolled out to different countries. And again, um, we're going to see in a second how that really looks like from an authoring perspective. So that's basically the page that we have seen just from the Magnolia authoring standpoint. And as we can see already, we have a lot of languages. For example, here, that's on the Chinese version. And I still have the um, what you see is what you get capabilities as we have seen here. And also, you can see it's just this in-context editing, for example, this carousel is something that is done um, extremely fluent from an authoring perspective. And besides that, if it's really about shaping the experience, quite often it's about small nuances. For example, just having a color picker, make sure that the content is really, the text is really going to look right in context. So you don't have to uh, come up with pre-rendered text like we have done years ago. That part here, um, this is really where we delve into this composability um, world. So for example, here we have just this um, image of our three docs here. And what we see here is just a very classical scenario for Magnolia. So as you can see, that content here came from Cloudinary, but I can fluently just switch, for example, to content that is coming from Magnolia. I think as an editor, you should not hop between different cockpits. Another thing that I like personally, even though it could be a little bit like Skynet maybe, <laughs> um, here we just have some kind of standard text. And what we can do is we can just take that content, whatever it is, and just send it, for example, for a paraphrasing service. And then this paraphrasing service is automatically going to give us various variations of the text. So that can help me a lot to keep somehow the content fresh um, and just indicate that there are updates for various search engines. And as we can see now, I just changed the content, the text, and immediately in our um, headless React application, that content is reflected. Another thing, if it's really, it's really um, key for the authoring experience, 
is clearly that direct access to the catalog. So it's really, um, you absolutely need this um, capability to access even a very large catalog and then have the capabilities to quickly filter down to the right products and um, place them if um, needed manually. Um, that part here, again, um, this is something that we'll see later on. How can I, if I have a lot of campaigns, how can I centrally manage them? It's also one of the key aspects in the full mix. Um, that part here, that's really just yet another um, underlining of this best of breed setup. For example, here we have um, attract, and attract in this case is going to do all the auto recommendations. Um, even so, the, the PIM data by itself can be then managed into any other e commerce solution. So again, it's about REST services and having the flexibility to plug in those components to come up with the different services for the experience um, that you're going to deliver. Okay, um, let's have a look on how I can just use all those translations and how to roll that really out um, to markets without having um, too many manual steps involved. So for example here, that would be the German side. So it looks familiar, it's just obviously uh, different translations and somehow same content. What I can do to roll out content, as we know, one size fits all, that's not the case in marketing. And therefore I can just um, protect certain areas from being automatically overwritten if I'm going to roll out content globally. So it's as simple as really flagging certain elements of a component or even the full component. And therefore I can manage it on my own as a local market editor or, and once I've done this, I can then very simply just basically roll that content out. So this change is really, as you can see, taking few seconds from having the content ready, having it somehow translated, selecting the key markets, and then I can just basically roll it out where it's then maybe reviewed by an editor if the market is relevant, or it could be even automatically published for smaller markets that are not under local uh, market here control. As you can see, this is what really takes push down that was 20 seconds maybe. I think that's really um, impressive. Okay, um, one thing if it comes to recommendation and reuse of content is really having that concept of content types. So it's really about having um, certain pieces of content isolated and then it's about delivering them to the right channels. And um, obviously, again, what you see is what you get really matters. Obviously, you have some still the full preview, but if you look now on the editing part of that um, content type, then it's really about capturing all that content quickly and then having really the channel, um, the authority of rendering um, on the channel side. And again, obviously we have here all the multi-language capabilities that you need to um, reuse this content then in any different um, region or market where you really need it. Another thing, um, that's um, basically the stories app. We heard this from Simon, um, something that we didn't do for a long time. It's now also um, solved. Quite often, it's not about having totally structured content, but instead semi structured content. And now you can really easily just, again, also in the um, stories framework, switch between the different languages, do all your translations, take content over, and so on. So I guess also at that point here, we have a really good solution to work with stories, for example, for blog posts, um, as we have seen um, at the beginning. Campaigns, it's one of the key things. Um, so if it's about campaign management, that is typically the content that just changes the the quickest in the end. And therefore, it's about pre-planning all those different campaigns, managing it. So for example, here we have a nice calendar view that really shows you what kind of campaigns are going to be delivered at which point. And um, yeah, it's about pre-planning, having this right schedule, and then also the flexibility to create those campaigns. For example, um, what we have here is just a standard teaser banner call to action. But again, you have the full flexibility as an author. And therefore, for example, you could just add yet another section with, um, let's say, um, two or three columns, and that's it. Now you can just start, for example, to handpick certain products for your promotion. Or what you can do is, again, just have some kind of recommend uh, recommendation algorithm that is then dynamically going to bring that um, matching content um, to the right person based on the user journey. 